Hello and welcome to this month's Heart of the Matter brought to you by Mayo Clinic and the SADS Foundation. I'm Dr. Michael Ackerman and I'm the director of Mayo Clinic's Long QT Syndrome Clinic and the Winland Smith Rice Sudden Death Genomics Laboratory and also the president of the SADS Foundation, the Sudden Arrhythmia Death Syndrome Foundation. This month's Heart of the Matter question is basically seeking a comment on our position on athletic screening in general and even newborn screening for genetic heart diseases like Long QT Syndrome. Well, thank you for this question. This is a very challenging topic about whether or not we should be screening for genetic heart rhythm diseases like Long QT Syndrome in athletes or screening for this disease in all people. The issue has a lot of uh, warts and wrinkles to it. It is not straightforward. There are some countries that do screen for Long QT Syndrome and diseases that are sudden death predisposing, potentially lethal, highly treatable diseases, also hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Countries like Japan and Italy have screening programs in place where athletes, and in some countries, non-athletes, in other words, all people, are screened for these. In the United States, we have not yet advised or recommended from a an American Heart Association or an American College of Cardiology perspective, a guideline-based recommendation for pre-sports participation athlete screening by way of an electrocardiogram or an echocardiogram. Instead, we've re recommended a physical exam and careful eliciting of the history, the family story, the person's story. And we cited a variety of reasons the, the uh, problems with the screening tools themselves, the ECG and the echo, whose eyes are going to be staring at those ECGs and the echo, the cost of the ECG and the echo, and a variety of issues. However, I would like for us to shift the discussion away from athlete screening or universal screening to disease-specific screening. Does long QT syndrome deserve to be screened for? Does hypertrophic cardiomyopathy deserve to be screened for? We screen for things in newborns that are far, far rarer than either of those genetic heart rhythm diseases. We don't screen for long QT syndrome currently, a disease that affects about 1 in 2,000 individuals. It is potentially lethal, but it is highly treatable when we know that it's there. Does it deserve to be screened for? I think the answer is absolutely. Then we need to ask the next question, who? Well, here's where I take issue with the notion of athlete screening. In the United States, there will be 50 to 100 athletes who will die tragically each year. There will be about 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, we actually don't know the number, of young people, people my age or younger, who will die suddenly each year. Most of them are not athletes. So I take issue with athlete-specific screening. I want to discover and detect long QT syndrome in a family of artists as much as I do in a family of athletes. I love athletics, but what's so special about the athlete? So we should be talking about screening a for long QT syndrome in all people, regardless of what they're choosing to do. If we were to do that, our only choice for a screening tool is the 12 lead electrocardiogram. So we are going to have to get smarter about the use of that tool if we were to implement it for universal ECG screening. We're not ready to do that today. We're not ready yet at the SADS Foundation to recommend that today, but we're calling for us to begin thinking about it and get smarter about it. And to that end, I invite many of you to join us in October, October 12th through 14th, 2012, at the SADS Foundation's International Conference that is going to be in Salt Lake City, where we are going to talk a, a lot about this issue of screening, of athlete screening in general, of universal screening. What, do, what would that look like? What things do we need to figure out? How do we get smarter about this? What, what do we have to do 
to screen individuals for the early detection of long QT syndrome because when we detect it, we know we can treat it and we can treat it well. And when we discover its presence, sudden death in that individual and in that family almost never happens. And I thank you for asking that question. And so that brings us to the end of this month's Heart of the Matter, and I look forward to being back with you next month. Have a good day.